The Earth is a bitch, sang my old star mate David Bowie. Homo sapiens have outgrown their use. You've got to make way for Homo superior. What happens when the kids of today become the kids of tomorrow? Uh, with many an attractive girl in her 20s used to come to me and say, I used to rush home from school to see your program. I thought you were gorgeous. And I'd say, oh, what are you doing tonight? And they'd say, no, that was then. Tomorrow People was very much um, ITV's answer to Doctor Who, but only in the same way that Magpie was their answer to Blue Peter. Tomorrow People was about these young kids who discover that they're the next level of human evolution, the rather unfortunately named Homo Superior. But members of a vigorous new federation, which from now on will look to young people like yourselves for guidance. These sci-fi super scouts were the brain children of commune-dwelling hippie Roger Price, who borrowed his idea from Pop's favourite spaceman. Roger Price had interviewed David Bowie. I don't know why or how, how, how this had occurred. And he was very inspired by the, 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 this meeting and, uh, and lifted the notion of the homo superior from all you pretty things. Roger Price was a genius, but he was quite mad. You showed us the error of our ways. We were wrong and you were right. The Tomorrow People is about a generation of uh, human beings that develop an ability to be able to read minds. Are you guys really creating them with your minds? Sure, Morgan. It's easy. And to jaunt. Goodbye! We were able to help, and we were able to stop the world from being devastated by alien invasion, but we could do it without the message of aggression. That was the key. Well, they're shooting at us. The inspector knew Mike sent us flowers. <laughs> Everyone, bring in our source and space fleet. Right. Well, the goals of the Tomorrow People are always to save the planet, save humanity, save uh, everybody in the universe. You know, There's a task that we did with consumer ease every week. The public loved it. The proof's in the pudding. Or rather, a mind bending space cake. The Tomorrow People were sold in 52 territories, apart from Sweden, where they found it too psychologically violent. You did it. The whole world is asleep. To be a Tomorrow person, you had to break out. Like a kind of sci-fi puberty, but without all that unsightly body hair. Breaking out was a pubescent teenage rebellious function, if you like. You felt odd, you had fits, you had people talking to you in your head and you were thinking, wow, I'm going mad, what's going on here? No! No, leave me alone! The strange things you go through in adolescence could be described and explained as actually you about to inherit superpowers. That was very seductive. If you weren't being understood by your parents, if your friends didn't like you, you could just say, ah, oh, don't worry, as soon as I get my powers, <laughs> you'll get yours. And once you'd broken out, you were free to row with an all-knowing, all-powerful, omnipresent computer dad called Tim. You're nothing but an artificial intelligence. What right have you got to keep me here? I'm not keeping you, mate. You are free to go. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim. I didn't mean to be rude. Tim was uh, effectively a lava lamp, in a way, with a few buttons and bobbles on top. But at the time, that was pretty incredible. I mean, nowadays, we probably demand more from our special effects and, uh, and everything, but at the time, that's all you needed, because it was all in your head anyway. People look back on it nostalgically and say, well, yes, of course, it was the 70s, so no wonder the special effects weren't as good as they might have been. But that's nonsense. We could have done better special effects, but we didn't have the money. The poor producers and directors and the artists had to work hours and hours and hours to achieve a quality kind of believable sci-fi series. Or maybe just hire a giant peanut knob-like costume and go down the pub. Obey me. You must obey me. Of course, one of the things that people remember about Tomorrow People is that it had this connection with this strange band, Flintlock. You really want to see Mike and his friends turn out to be glorified Bay City rollers with no life of their own and thousands of screaming girl fans chasing after them? Mike Holloway, who was the drummer in Flintlock, was, was Mike in the Tomorrow People, and Flintlock actually turned up in, in one of the stories. The story was that I, as the rebellious Tomorrow person, had my own little pop band down in the local hall, and we happened to stumble across this rhythm which I stumbled on, which was ba bum ba bum 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 ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum 
However, introducing popular beat music to sci-fi didn't please everyone. Some of her phone for an ambulance. No, she's going to be all right now. Come on. Just being sent by the music. They had their own TV series as well, I believe, and they had a, a massive hit that went roaring up to um, number 30 or something um, and uh, disappeared, well, it jaunted out of the charts fairly quickly. And soon the Tomorrow People jaunted off TV. As Roger Price quit and disappeared, no one's seen him since. As all good sci-fi fans know, you can't really be alone. But he's obviously found some corner of the universe where he can hide away. Only the Tomorrow People could probably find him, I would think. The show ended in 1979, but some true believers still can't let go. These people are serious. I mean, they believe they are breaking out. They believe they are going into the superior homo sapien phase, and it's a worry. That really never happened. I never quite developed my psychic powers. Um, but I still might. What everybody has to realise about um, the Tomorrow People is that after all said and done, it's not real, and it was just a programme.